We think of police as crime fighters, not psychologists, but increasingly, the NYPD's interactions are with people in extreme mental distress. Tonight, I take you behind the scenes at the police academy, where new training pits actors against officers as they relearn how to handle the most volatile of encounters with emotionally disturbed people, or EDPs. What am I doing? I'm sitting here. A fight breaks out. You just said I asked you. Between a couple. I walked off day, right? He's a veteran with post-traumatic stress disorder who owns a bodega. Whoa, 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 whoa. She is his third wife. I can't believe this that yeah. you're doing this again. You know you're not supposed to be doing Oh, stop your <laughs> right? As it escalates. What are you doing? I'm trying to relax after working all day. I... Cops are called and I've just been trained as one of the responding officers. I'm, I'm Officer Dubois. Hey, Officer Dubois. How you doing? What are you, French? Right here, right now, my gut reaction may be to punch this guy. But I've learned my response can either escalate the situation or diffuse it. Whatever you need, man. Uh, How's everything? everything? This is the NYPD's crisis intervention training for patrol officers. Dr. Tracy Kazee is the deputy commissioner. It's a really, really powerful way to learn. Mm -hmm. The four-day course includes role play between actors portraying mentally ill citizens and officers learning the most effective ways to deal with them. 80% of what we're doing is listening. Lieutenant Mark Turner is an instructor. When the emotions are high, your rationale is low. Every year, 130,000 calls come into 911 involving emotionally disturbed people. Give me a snapshot, if you will, of where mental health is in the city. One in five New Yorker adults um, meeting criteria for a diagnosable mental illness. While the vast majority of calls do end peacefully, some have not. Over the years, police have tried a variety of tactics to deal with the emotionally disturbed. In 1984, CBS2 reporter Chris Borgen demonstrated what was known as the psycho bar. And I was wrapped up in a, like a blue mat. In 2007, Dustin Gross, a schizophrenic, says police forced him into a mesh restraining device. I just wish that they, they uh, kind of empathized with me a little more. And in 2016... Uh, my commitment to the city is that I'm going to investigate this. There was the highly publicized case of Deborah Danner, a mentally ill woman killed by police in her home, forcing the department to reevaluate its procedures. I would never forgive them because she didn't have to die. Wallace Cook is not only a former NYPD officer, he's Danner's cousin. Did I ran into mentally ill? Plenty of them. All you have to do is show people a little kindness. And that is what today's training is trying to do. That someone can be a functioning person and can be productive and can have a family, but have a crisis periodically. That's a really important lesson. A lesson that's actually taught to the officers by real people living full lives that includes having mental illness. We depend on you to protect us, even if we don't know we want you to protect us. Since the course began here in 2015, more than 5,000 NYPD officers have been trained. So is it working? And he looked at me, he's like, I'm done. I'm fed up. Officer Giovanna Rodriguez with the 109th Precinct says it helped her save a suicidal man's life. Do you smile when you think about that? I do. Why? I know I did a good job that day. Oh, can you do me a favor? Can you just come around, the, can you come around this thing? And so did my partners back at the bodega. Sergeant Kenneth Jefferson and Officer Raul Rodriguez not only calmly talked down that irate owner, they got him to agree to go for help. Uh, I'm sorry about the French thing, bro. I can okay. be an I'm sorry. Preventing things from going really bad by keeping him away from the back closet and the loaded rifle inside. Mm. Now, the city's inspector general recently criticized the NYPD, saying it doesn't have an efficient system to dispatch the officers who receive this training. NYPD says its goal is to train the entire patrol force. Now, another unique aspect of the training officers at times were wearing headsets that allow them to feel what it's like to hear voices in their mm. heads. So, um, back to that scenario. Doc Doherty, the actor in mm -hmm. there, very convincing. I would say so. I walk in, first it's sort of, you think it's kind of lighthearted, and then it's intense, it's serious. Mm -hmm. And you understand what it's like to be an officer where you don't know what's behind the desk, where those guys' hands are, mm -hmm. where, you know, he has his weapons, if he has any, mm -hmm. and they very professionally took that situation down. <laughs> it was really Did something to see. Did it kind of catch off guard, though, very like much when, so. it, when it first happened? Very much so. But then you learn that they have no idea what they're walking into yeah. every single day. That's All new respect. Really right? impressive, yeah. All right. You bet.